Okay, let's now talk of factorization of algebraic expressions. All right. So how do you factorize? So assuming you have to simplify 12x squared y minus 3xy squared, how do you go about it? All right. So we are going to go through these three steps. All right. These three steps in solving this particular question. All right. So let's start. So the first thing is to find the common factor between the terms. Right, so between 12x squared y and 3xy squared, what is a common factor? So in determining the common factor, we are going to consider the numbers aspect and then the variables aspect. So in terms of the numbers, what is the common factor of 12 and 3? Right, obviously it is 3 because 3 can divide 12 or 3 is a factor of 12. Right, so with a common factor, we need a number that can divide um, the two the two numbers right so we need a number that can divide 3 and the same time can divide 12 and that is the number 3 so 3 will come out so that is for the number aspect now for the variable aspect we have x squared we have x the common factor is obviously x because s can divide itself s can also divide x squared right? so x will come out let's come to the y so we have y here we have y squared here the common factor here too is y because y can divide itself and y can divide y squared right so 3xy becomes our common factor and then we bring the common factor outside so place the common factor outside the bracket as a coefficient right so it's outside and then we are going to divide each term by the common factor and keep the quotient inside the bracket so what this means is that we are going to so for this first term here 12x squared y now we've established that the common factor is 3xy so what we are going to do is that we are going to divide this 12xy by the common factor here right and then we are going to keep the quotient or the result of the division inside the bracket so how many times will 3xy go into 12x squared y All right so here too we are going to do it accordingly so we are going to start with the numbers and then we move on to the variables aspect so how many times would 3 divide 12? It is 4 times. So we are going to keep the 4 in the bracket. So that is all for the, the, the number aspect. Then we come to the variables aspect. How many times will x go into x squared? It is x times. Right? You get it? And then how many times will y go into y times? Well, how many times will y go into y? It is 1 time. It is 1. But since it is 1, we don't bring it. Right? We don't bring it. So it means that 3xy will go into 12x squared y 4x times. Meaning when I multiply 3xy by 4x, I'm supposed to get this. I'm supposed to get 12x squared y. And it's true. Because 3, 4 is 12. x times x is x squared. And then y times nothing. That's y times y is still y. Giving me 12x squared y. Alright? I believe you get it. So, we are done with the first term. Let's come to the second term. So we have to divide 3xy squared by 3xy. So let's start with the number aspect. How many times will 3 divide 3? It is 1. Whenever you divide it, then the result is 1. You don't write anything at all. Okay. So x divides x one time. So we don't write anything. How many times will y divide y squared? It is y times. Because y times y is y squared, right? So we are going to keep that y inside the bracket. So the result is simply going to be 3xy into bracket 4x minus y, as simple as that. Right. Okay, let's now look at this question. So we have to factorize a plus 2b all squared minus 3 into bracket a plus 2b. Good. So simply, we are going to expand this one. Okay, we are going to expand this a plus b all squared. So in expansion, you're going to have a plus 2b in one bracket, multiplying the expression a plus 2b. And then we attach the second expression to it. Minus 3 into bracket a plus 2b in one bracket. Now, what can you say about these two? So it means that here we are having two different terms. So the first term is a plus 2b multiplying a plus 2b. So this is one term. Okay, and This is not two terms, but this is one term. Because we said it is only 
addition and subtraction are separate terms but here what is separating them is multiplication so it means that it is still one term right so this is one term minus three into bracket a plus two b so now the first thing like we said is find the common factor between the terms so between this and this what is the common factor the common factor is what is a plus two b because we have a plus two b here and a plus two b here or a plus two b can divide this expression and it can also divide this expression so it means a plus 2b must come out as the common factor and then we divide each term by the common factor right divide each term by the common factor and then we keep the quotient in the bracket so for here for this first term we are going to divide it by a plus 2b so what is a plus 2b in one bracket multiply a plus 2b in another bracket divided by a plus 2b or how many times will a plus 2b go into this expression it is simply a plus 2b times all right yeah so that is for the first term then we come to the second term how many times will a plus 2b go into minus 3 into bracket a plus 2b well it will just cancel out okay we'll just cancel out this a plus 2b leaving us with what with negative 3 so we just attach the negative 3 to the a plus 2b in the bracket Right, so our final answer becomes a plus 2b in one bracket multiplying the expression a plus 2b minus 3 right, so that is all about factorization of algebraic expressions right okay let's proceed okay let's now look at uh, what we call trinomials right so we, we've looked at binomials and we said binomial is an algebraic expression with two different terms so here we are having trinomial now tri means three right tri means three so whenever we or whenever we hear a trinomial it means an algebraic expression with three terms so a binomial is an algebraic expression with two terms a trinomial is an algebraic expression with three different terms so um but yeah we are going to look at um a special kind of trinomial known as a quadratic trinomial quadratic means that one of the terms should contain a variable that is squared right that is what a quadratic means so a quadratic trinomial is always in the form as ax squared plus bx plus c right where a must not be equal to zero and a b and c are constant right so a b and c are constants so in fact this x can be any variable at all it can be y it can be z it can be a it can be whatever right it can be whatever but then this a this a this b and this c they are numbers okay they are constant they are numbers all right so um, um a classic example of a quadratic trinomial is this 3y squared plus 7y minus 6 right but then you see it follows the same format right it follows the same format so we have one of the variables being squared right so that is what qualifies a trinomial to be a quadratic trinomial so let's look at how we can factorize a quadratic trinomial all right so if we have 3y squared plus 7y minus 6 and we are told to factorize how do we go about it so let's use this example uh, even as we go through the, the steps here let's use it on this example right so that you can have a practical understanding of it so the first thing you have to do is to multiply a by c or find a c right find a c so here what is our a our a is the coefficient of the variable squared right so a x squared so the a is always the coefficient of the variable that has been squared so our a here is 3 as you can see 3y squared the b is the coefficient of the variable without the square right and that is 7 in this case so 7y so b is 7 and our c is the constant or the number standing on its own right so here it is negative 6 good now in factorizing the trinomial what you do is like you multiply the a by the c so we, we've been able to establish that our, our a is 3 
our B is 7 and our C is negative 6. So now what is our AC? So what is 3 times negative 6? That is negative 18. So that is step 1. Step 2. Find two factors of AC whose sum also gives B. So the next thing to do is that find two numbers that when you multiply, you are going to get your AC. That is negative 18. But then when you add, you are going to get your B. That is 7. Alright. So what are these two numbers? Well, negative 18, we can say that 2 and negative 9. Right? 2 and negative 9 gives us negative 18. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. Right? But when you add them, are you going to get your 7? No. Because 2 plus negative 9 gives you negative 7. Right? So then we have to interchange the position of the or we have to interchange the um, the number that should carry the negative sign so we can give the negative sign to the 2 and the positive to the 9 I believe you know that negative 2 times 9 is the same as positive 2 times negative 9 both of them will give you negative 18 I believe you know that yeah so even that the two number that when you multiply we will get our AC, but when we add, we will get this B of 7 is negative 2 and positive 9. Because 9 minus 2 is 7. Or negative 2 plus 9 is what? Is 7. So after getting these two numbers, we substitute the B with these two numbers. So initially it was 3y squared plus 7y minus 6. But since we've gotten the two numbers that when we add, we are going to arrive at the 7. We are going to simply replace it with those two numbers. So we are going to replace the 7y with plus 9y minus 2y. As simple as that. Right? And we, we, we've not changed anything. We've not changed anything. Because 9y minus 2y is still 7y. But then we just replace it with, we just um, split it into two. Right? So we have 3y squared plus 9y minus 2y minus 6. The next thing is to okay, so you realize that we have we now have four different terms, right? So it is no longer a trinomial, it is now what okay, it's now more of um, an algebraic expression with four different terms, right? Or four different expressions. So the next thing is to group the four, four expressions into two. So we are going to group the first two and then the last two, right? So for the first two, it's going to be 3y squared plus 9y in one bracket. For the second one, it's going to be minus into bracket 2y plus 6. Now, you are seeing that we've changed the operation here. Because whenever negative multiplies a negative, another negative, the result is positive. Right? So the moment you open a bracket in front of a negative sign, you have to change the operation that comes within or that appears within the bracket. So here it was negative 2y minus 6. And because a bracket is to be placed in front of this negative sign, the operation will change the opposite one. So here it becomes plus. Take note of that. If it was plus, it will become negative. So whenever, once again, whenever you place the bracket in front of a negative sign, the operation inside the bracket must change right so the next thing is to factorize each bracket so we've done factorization right so um, we are just going to find a common factor so the common factor here is 3y so 3y goes into 3y squared y times it goes into 9y three times so we are going to have 3y into bracket y plus 3 minus the common factor is 2 right they open the bracket so 2 into 2y is just y 2 into 6 is what is 3 right now you realize that always always after factorizing whatever you get in the bracket are the same whatever you get in the bracket are the same so here was y plus 3 in the bracket similarly here to it is y plus 3 right? so that is there is one way of knowing that you are correct or you're on the right track right after factorizing the two brackets whatever you get in the bracket must be the same the next thing is to combine the terms outside the bracket 
and put them in one bracket and then you multiply that bracket by the other bracket so here we have some terms outside the bracket and that is 3y and minus 2 right so I'm going to put them in brackets so 3y minus 2 and then we attach it to one of the brackets here y plus 3 that's all so that's all for factorizing quadratic trinomials I believe it was simple right okay so let's proceed okay let's now look at phrases and algebraic expressions so maths can be communicated in words or let me say it is not the time that um, you you see you know it's not the time that you would see um, figures maths is about figures but then it can be spoken or it can be communicated in words um, and that's where sometimes you have your word problem all right so let's look at how to um, how to interpret some phrases in maths or some mathematical statements right so if i say a number p is increased by 17 a number p is increased by 17 now how do you write it mathematically it's simply going to be 17 plus p right okay as you as, as you mean i said that 17 is increased by um is, is, is increased by three what is the final answer it is 20. how do you get a 20 it was 17 plus 3 right so the p here represent a number right so in mathematics um letters are used to represent numbers letter letters are always used to represent numbers okay so let's look at this um, statement too 14 is decreased by a number x right so that that gives us 14 minus x so assuming i said 14 is decreased by 3 what to be your final answer there's going to be 11 how do you get 11 14 minus 3 right so here the number is x that is why it was 14 minus x so 14 is decreased by a number so the 14 comes first and then the number that is being taken out of 14 comes second then you bring the subtraction sign all right okay let's cut this one too five more than twice a number five more more means addition plus five more twice means multiplication so what is twice a number b what is twice of four twice of four means two times four right that is eight so what is twice of b it is two times b that is two b right and what is five more than two b or what is five added to two b that is two b plus five as simple as that so always interpret it from you know that practical perspective right let's look at this one too six times the square of a number y right so what is the square of a number the square of a number is that number squared that number raised to the power two so the square of y is y squared six times so what is six times y squared that is six y squared all right okay let's go to the last one the square of a number x plus twice the number so the number is x so what is the square of x that is x squared plus twice the number what is twice of x that is two times x and that is what 2x so the square of a number x plus twice the number is simply x squared plus 2x right so let's look at this example here a boy is 12 years old now now if i if i'm to ask you that how old would he be in x years time how and i ask you to write a mathematical um, expression for this uh, result or for your answer now how old would he be in x years time so since he's 12 years now how old he would be in x years time is going to be 12 plus x right as you mean you are let's say 17 years old now and i ask you how old would you be in five years how do you find that it's going to be 12 so it's going to be 17 your present age plus the number of years that has been added on that is five that gives you 22 right yeah so here to the number of years that has been added on to the current year or the current age is what is x 
so how old he would be in x years time is simply 12 plus x okay what of the second one how old how old was he m years ago so back to the same illustration he was 17 years old now how old were you three years ago how do you find that it's going to be your present age minus the number of years that have been taken out right so it's going to be 17 minus 3 that gives you 14 so here the present age is 12 then we subtract the number of years that have been taken out that is m so 12 minus m right so um let us basically represent numbers in maths right so it's, it's simple so if um if you don't want to um get confused or if you want to easily find your way around it try using a number as an example you get me so assuming you asked how old was he m years ago well assuming you don't really know how to go about it put a figure there put a number there so how old was he let's say two years ago so how would you have found it so it's, it's simply going to be 12 minus 2 right so just replace that two with, with the m as simple as that right okay let's move on okay let's now look at um algebraic fractions okay so um when you talk of fractions what comes in mind what comes in mind is um, a numerator and then a denominator right but in this case they are algebraic expressions right with numerators and denominators so let's look at how to perform some operations on algebraic fractions so we have 2 over y plus 5 over y squared right, so we are simply going to apply the concept of addition of fractions addition of fractions subtraction of fractions um, division of fractions and then multiplication of fractions is the same thing we are going to do here right nothing new so as usual if you are adding two fractions the first thing to do is to do it is to find your lcm right so what is the lcm of y and y squared well it is obviously y squared so how many times will y go into y squared it is y times and then you multiply that one by the numerator which is 2 right so that gives us 2 times y and then you come to the second fraction y squared so how many times will y squared go into y squared it is 1 what is 1 times 5 it is 5 right so 5 times 1 so the result is simply going to be 2y plus 5 all over y squared finito all right okay let's come to the second one so we have 3 minus 2a all over a plus 2 so now whenever a number stands on its own it has a denominator of 1 all right so this 3 is the same as 3 over 1 minus 2a all over a plus 2 so we just find the lcm and the lcm is a plus 2 right so how many times will one go into a plus two it is the same a plus two times right then you multiply by the numerator three right so that gives us three into bracket a plus two a plus two sorry then we come to the second denominator a plus two so how many times will a plus two go into a plus two it is once right so what is one times two a so that becomes two a times one so from here we just expand the bracket right so here i'm going to get 3a plus 6 minus 2a all over a plus 2 then we solve the the numerator right we can group like terms here so we have 3a we have minus 2a so we can group the 3a and then the minus 2a and then we attach the plus 6 to it so what is 3a minus 2a that is a so you're going to have a plus 6 all over a plus 2 right so let's now move on to the, the third one x plus 3 all over x squared minus 9 right so for here we are going to apply the concept of the difference of two squares the difference of two squares because x squared is a square 9 is also a, a square it's a perfect square right but then obviously you know that 9 is 3 squared right 9 is 3 squared so we can simplify this one as x plus 3 all over x plus 3 in one bracket multiplying the expression x minus 3 difference of two squares all right so from here we can cancel out this x plus 3 and the x plus 3 up here so our final answer becomes 1 all over x minus 3 i believe it's so simple right 
Okay, now to our final question. All right. So we have to solve for r cube all over 9s squared divided by 8r squared s to the power 4 all over 15rs. Right. So for division, the first thing you do is that you interchange the position of what of whatever comes after the division sign. And then you change the division sign to multiplication. That's why here you are seeing times 15 rs over 8 r squared s to the power 4. So you have interchanged the position of what of the original expression here. So here the 8 r squared s to the power 4 came down and the 15 rs came up. Right? And then we've changed the division sign to the multiplication. So from here we can you can simplify okay we can do some simplification okay so um basically four can go into eight two times right so four cancels eight two times so leaving us with two here now here we have out to the power two so out to the power two can divide itself one and then it would go into our to the power three our times I believe you get me. In fact, when you divide r to the power 3 by r to the power 2, you are going to get r. So you are just doing cross simplification. Right? So you are simplifying. Right? So what is r to the power 3 divided by r to the power 2? Right? So because it is 2, it is going to take out the 2 here, leaving you with just 1 r. Right? So you are going to have 2s to the power 4. And you are going to have r up here. Now for this two size two, three goes into nine three times. Now that I've seen the three here, three goes into fifteen five times. I've seen the five here. Now s can go into s squared s times. So the s will cancel itself and then it will cancel one of the s's here, leaving us with three s. So we are going to have r over three s times five r over two s to the power four. So for me, I'm going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So you're going to have r times 5r all over 3s times 3 times 2s to the power 4, right? So what is r times 5r? It is 5r squared, right? Because r to the power 1, r to the power 1. And this is to tell you that you just add up their, their powers. So it's going to be 5r to the power 2. Here to 3 by 2 is 6, right? And s times s to the power 4 is simply going to be s to the power 5. Right, so our final answer here is 5r squared all over 6s to the power 5. I believe it's well understood, right? Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, let's look at the final part of our discussion. And that is what we call the undefined algebraic expression. Now, generally, we say that a fraction is undefined if it denominator is equal to zero right so if i ask you to punch two over zero on your calculator you are going to get math error okay it's not going to give you any answer right so it means that any number divided by zero we can't find the the value of it so in mathematical sense we call it undefined right so whenever a fraction is or whenever a number is divided by zero it is undefined. I mean, we, we, we can't find the answer to it. So, let's apply the same concept in algebraic expression or algebraic fraction. So, there are times that you'd have or you'd be given an algebraic fraction and then you'd be asked to find the value of a particular variable, right? Given that that algebraic fraction is undefined. So, let's use these three examples to understand how to go about it. So we have to find the values of x for which the following expressions are undefined. Right? So how do you go about it? First of all, what does it mean for for an algebraic fraction to be undefined? It means that the denominator is equal to zero. That's all we are interested in. So it means that here the denominator 3x minus 12 is equal to zero. So all that they are trying to ask you to do is to solve for x in this equation. As simple as that so how do you solve for x so you simply bring the negative 12 to the right side and it becomes positive right 
so that gives you 3x is equal to positive 12 and then you divide both sides by 3 right and that gives you 3x over 3 is equal to 12 over 3 right so what is 12 over 3 it is 4 so your x is equal to 4 let's come to this second question so here to we equate the denominator x squared minus 4 to 0 right once again this one is difference of two squares right so you just have to apply all that we have studied so far so x squared minus 4 is x plus 2 in one bracket multiplying the expression x minus 2 because this 4 is also 2 squared so in applying the principle of difference of two squares this is what you are going to get so everything is equal to 0 right now in math whenever you have two brackets multiplying and they are all equal to 0 Right. What you mean is that, or in order to find the value of the variable in the two brackets, pick each bracket and equate it to zero. So, in solving this one, I'm going to pick the first bracket, x plus two, and then I'll equate it to zero. So I'm going to solve them separately. Okay. So x plus two is equal to zero for the first bracket. So from here, I solve for x. So I'm going to get x equal to negative 2 because these two have to cross the equal to sign and become negative. So x is equal to negative 2. Then I come to this second bracket and then solve it separately. So x minus 2 is equal to 0, right? So x is equal to what? This negative 2 will cross the equal to sign and it becomes plus 2, right? Therefore, my x is equal to plus or minus 2, right? So the first one was negative 2, the second one was positive 2. So my x is what? Plus 2 or minus 2. Okay, let's now come to the final question. So here to be equal the denominator to 0, right? So 6x squared minus 11x plus 3 is equal to 0. Now, this is a classic picture of what? A quadratic trinomial. But because an equal to sign is here, we call it a quadratic equation. So if there is no equal to sign, it becomes a quadratic trinomial. But at the moment you see an equation sign, it becomes a quadratic equation. Right? So you are going to apply the same concept, right? The same principle. So you find you find AC. You multiply the A, which is 6 by the 3. Right? And that gives us 18. Positive 18. And then you find two numbers that when you multiply, you get 18. But when you add, you get negative 11 as your B. And what are those two numbers? It is negative 2 and negative 9. I believe you know negative 2 times negative 9 is positive 18. Right? So we are going to split the negative 11x into negative 2x and a negative 9x. Right? Then we are going to group these four expressions into 2. So you are going to have 6x squared minus 2x in one bracket. Minus into bracket. The moment you bring a bracket in front of a negative sign, you have to change the operation within the bracket. So here it becomes minus 9x minus 3 because here was plus. So we change it to, to minus. And then you equate everything to 0. And then you factorize each of the two brackets. So in factorizing this bracket, the common factor is 2x. right? So 2x goes into 6x squared 3x times. And it goes into 2x one time. right? So that is that. The common factor here too is 3. So the 3 comes out and then you divide each term here by the 3. Right? So we're going to have 3 into bracket 3x minus 1. Right? Everything being equal to 0. So once again, you realize that whatever is in the two brackets are the same after factorizing. Right? Then you are going to combine the terms outside. So 2x minus 3 in one bracket. And then 3x minus 1 in another bracket. And then you equate everything to, to 0. Here too, you are going to pick each bracket and equate it to 0. And then you solve separately. So what is 2x minus 3 is equal to 0? So simply, you are going to bring the negative 3 to the right side. And it becomes positive 3. And then you divide both sides by, by 2. Leaving you with x is equal to 3 over 2. When you come here to 3x minus y is equal to 0. You take the negative one to the right side, it becomes positive one. So you get 3x equal to 1. But you divide both sides by 3. 
so your x is equal to 1 over 3 right? so that is all about um, undefined algebraic fractions so whenever you're asked to find the value of let's say x for a particular algebraic fraction or expression which is undefined simply equate the denominator to zero and then you solve that's all right okay so this is where we bring the lesson to an end